Alan Edmonds and Alden, what's a new buyer's perspective? Stay tuned and find out. Hello everyone, my name is Chris Shaha. I am a saxophonist in the Los Angeles area, and normally I'm posting music performance videos, but I wanted to do something a little different. Because some of us are still stuck at home, me being one of them, I wanted to do something different. Because I don't have any music performance videos that I really have to share, I wanted to share another passion of mine that I have with you guys, and that is quality menswear. I've been getting into quality menswear over the course of, geez, the last five or six months, and it's really changed my perspective on a lot of things. How has it changed my perspective? Well, for one, I, as a musician, I do need to have nice clothes, tuxedos, suits, good shoes, so I have to look performance ready. And the second thing is that I want to be able to save my money in the long run. So what are we looking at here today? Well, we're looking at three different dress shoes from two different shoe companies. Both of them are considerably heritage American dress shoe companies. <clears throat> so right here closest to me, we have the Allen Edmonds Park Avenue, which costs $395. Right here in the middle, we have the Allen Edmonds Hopkinson, which costs $530. And down at the end, we have the Alden straight to Balmoral Oxford, then number 907, which costs $565. Now I know already that price tag does provide a little bit of sticker shock, but let me do some explaining. So say I buy these Allen Edmonds Park Avenues right here next to me for $395, <clears throat> and I hold on to them for 20 years. That is a cost of $20 per year. Now compare that to a dress shoe which costs 120 bucks and they only last me three years. That is a cost of $40 per year. That, that does not account for, say, how many days in a year you would wear that shoe. Already, the more expensive dress shoe has lasted longer, provided that it is cared for well. Here are some cliff notes that should be considered when buying a quality dress shoe. Now, for a more in-depth look about what to look for in a quality dress shoe, I'll link to a video right up over here. Now, the first thing you should be looking for in a quality dress shoe is proper fit. Now, that does mean you need to get the proper size of your foot. For me, I've been buying size 13 shoes a lot of years, but recently discovered that I have a B width foot. Now say I have a shoe that my foot filled 95% and I'm not having any problems like my toes aren't lapping onto one another. My foot would be more properly supported by that shoe that is more properly fitted than the one with a lot of excess room. How do you make sure you get the right shoe size? Well when you go to normally buy shoes, there's a little device that, that you use to measure your feet up. That is called a Brannock device, and you use that to essentially find the proper sizing of your shoe. It measures your length and your width. So be sure you are measuring your foot against the Brannock device. The second thing is high quality leather. This one's a little trickier per se, but here's a big pointer that I found out about how to figure out what has quality leather and what does not. High quality leather feels nice and soft to the touch. Other leathers will feel like plastic. Understandably so, there is good leather on cheaper dress shoes, but cheaper dress shoes will not last a long time. And that goes into my third point, which is the shoes have stitched outsoles. That means that these shoes have not been cemented together and the sole is held on by stitching onto the welt. This means you can continuously resole the shoe for the lifetime of the shoe. And if your shoe lasts 20 years, maybe even longer, you already spent less on this quality dress shoe than you did one where you get it, it's glued together, and you're throwing it out when it expires. And the last point is that you want to see hard countering throughout the shoe on the cap, in the heel, and on the arch. So here I have one of the dress shoes I currently own. All the dress shoes I currently have are $200 or less. This is a Florsheim Ashlyn, which I purchased on clearance from Men's Warehouse for about $80. And one thing I wanna show you is when, as I'm taking this shoe tree out for that matter. 
is, is that there's really no hard countering in this shoe. And by that, I mean I can crush the cap easily. The heel actually holds together fairly well, but we get to the arch here, and I can press this in no problem. This means your foot is not supported. If I pick up this Alden on the other hand, if I push on the cap, that is stiff as a board. If I press on the heel, that is also stiff as a board, and I go into the arch, that is stiff as a board. That means your foot is properly supported because it is stiffened up. And generally, you will only find that sort of stiffening in a dress shoe that costs over $200. So what do these three dress shoes have in common? First thing is that they are factory made in a similar, if not the same fashion. The second thing is that they're Goodyear welted, which as I went over means you can resole the shoe for the life of the shoe. The third thing is that these shoes have full grain calfskin uppers, which have been imported. Is the imported part bad? No, because the fact of the matter is that these shoes are 100% American made otherwise. And the last thing I want to share, and this is a little more on a negative note, this isn't a huge detractor for the shoes, but these shoes do have fiberboard or particle leather heel stacks. And by that I mean the heel block right here is made of compressed leather or even, even worse, a fiberboard which is typically found in construction material. Does that automatically disqualify it from making it a good dress shoe? Absolutely not because the rest of the shoe, say this Allen Edmond Park Avenue, they are well built as you can surely see. And then to top it off, when you go to get your shoes resold, you can ask for the heel to be 100% replaced with a true leather heel stack. So those are the pointers about the shoes that they have in common. Now I wanna put out a huge disclaimer to all of you watching this video. I did not personally try these shoes on. These shoes are a 10D in size. That means my foot is too long for any of these shoes that I have right next to me. But that doesn't mean I can't feel these shoes by hand to feel the quality that they hold. So now let's get into the more detailed comparisons of these shoes. So the first shoes I have right here next to me are the Allen Edmonds Park Avenue. Now these cost $395. This is actually the model of shoe that brought Allen Edmonds to fame. and is famously worn by recent American presidents. This shoe is available in size 5 to 13 in half size increments and from 14 to 16 in whole size increments. That's already a lot of lengths that the shoe can accommodate for. To top it off, Allen Edmonds also offers an abundance width selection from quadruple A all the way up to triple E and everything in between. So you have a large selection of lengths and you have probably the fullest selection of widths available. Allen Edmonds probably has the most sizes available for all their dress shoes. However, I do want to make a quick note. The Park Avenue is only available in all widths once you get to a size eight and a half. Everything before that, the width selection is slightly narrowed. And you can see that just by going to their website and checking out the Park Avenue page. So this shoe is built on their 65 last, which is a slightly more almond shape last. So if I come up a little closer, it does have a bit of a round shape to it, but it definitely has a bit more of an almond shape to it. And to top it off, this has six eyelets, which is a bit more of a traditional American style. Of course, on the inside, there is a calfskin lining, which is nice and soft. And probably one of the biggest things that Allen Edmonds is known for is their 360 degree welt. So if I come up nice and close, you can see welting going all the way around the shoe. So you can see the welting even go around the heel. It makes it really easy to recraft these shoes whenever they get sent to a cobbler or even Allen Edmonds. Now I'm going to give a bit more of an aesthetic critique and that is that the upper it has three stitches right here across the band. Now that is a little more dense than some other shoes that are out on the market, but that doesn't make this any less quality of a dress shoe than the other two pairs right here. And then to top it off, these have a rubber top left here on the heel. That is slightly different from these two pairs of dress shoes, which I'll go over in a minute. Now the next shoe I want to go over is the Allen Edmonds Hopkinson. 
This is a shoe that is inspired by the Park Avenue and is a part of their Independence Collection and you can actually search the Independence Collection on their website simply by going to the search bar and typing in Independence. Here are the details of the Independence Collection courtesy of Alan Edmonds themselves and I'll link to the video up here in the corner if you want to see the whole video. Um, the major difference in our Heritage Collection and the Independence Collection are really in the raw materials. Um, Heath, we use a, uh, we source the upper from a uh, high-end tannery in southern France. Very proud of that relationship. We also line the shoe in lambskin. Very um, soft. A very soft to the touch, um, opposed to lining our heritage collection in cowhide. Um, the insole is a, a poron type um, cushioned insole. Um, we still offer the uh, the cork midsole as we do uh, throughout our, our collections. Um, the sole is uh, a two-tone sole, but what's really neat is we use the brass tacking in the uh, top lift, and I love how we soften the, way, uh, the waistline with this beveled edge. Uh, just a great uh, comfort product. And you see they've done some detailing, the fudge wheel around on the, on the Absolutely. weld Absolutely. We call that wheeling of mm -hmm. the welt, and we only do it with the Independence Collection. So, so as you saw in the video, there are higher quality materials that go into the Hop into the Hopkinson than do the Park Avenues. And that is why this is a $530 shoe instead of the $395 that the Park Avenue is. Now this shoe has a lot less of a size selection than the Park Avenues do. This shoe has a six and a half starting length and it goes up to a 12 in half size increments. Then you get sizes 13, 14, and 15 after that. As for the width selection, it is only available in B, D, single E, and triple E. Already that is a lot less sizes available than the Park Avenue. Allen Edmonds offers a lot of sizes, however that does not mean they offer all those sizes for all of the shoes that they offer. So this shoe is built on their 201 last, which is actually more of a round last. So you, so you can see that this comes more roundabout, and if I grab the Park Avenue right here, so that I have the Park Avenue right here in my left hand, and the Hopkinson here in my right hand, so you can see that the Park Avenue actually comes a bit more to a pointed toe than the rounded toe on the Hopkinson. However, there are a couple of things I want to point out in regards to this shoe. This shoe has a bit more of a defined arch and a sculpted heel than the Park Avenues. So let me grab the Park Avenue once again. If I, sh if I show you the arch shape here on Park Avenue, definitely doesn't have the same tightness that the Hopkinson does. And there's one test that Kirby Allison has actually done which is that if you were to drop a pencil or a pen or any other writing utensil, whichever you want to do, if you drop it straight down from the heel, heel base right here, you drop it straight down, that will actually determine how wide this arch is. And when I compared this Hopkinson to the Park Avenue, the Hopkinson had the most, surprisingly of the three dress shoes, the most room from the waist up through the arch. Of course, this also has the 360 degree welt that the, that the Park Avenue does. And one thing I wanna highlight from the clip I shared with you guys in this video is that the Hopkinson is meant to be a comfort product. How comfortable is it? I have no idea, though I do plan on doing a trial video in the near future. So if you'd like to see that, please drop a like on this video and subscribe for the future content. Now, last but not least, I have the Alden Straight Tip Balmoral Oxford in their 907 variety, which of course is their black calf. Quick little thing about Alden before we talk about the shoe is that Alden is actually famous for their number 405 work boot, which is also famously dubbed the indie boot, famous for their appearance on the Indiana Jones movies. And you can see those by, by the photos I'm sharing right now. Now back, now back to these shoes. These Aldens actually have a greater size selection than the Hopkinson, surprisingly. And you can see that 
by looking at this photo of the 2019 Alden catalog. Now, do they off now does Alden offer more sizes this year than they do from the 2019 catalog? I don't 100% know, though I can tell you that these shoes already have a greater size selection. So that so that means if you want it, if you were interested in this shoe, you can actually get more sizes than this shoe, which costs about the same price as these guys do. $530 and $565 when you're already dropping this much money is not a very big difference. And this, this shoe is the most durably made of the three and I'll get into those details. So this shoe is made on the Hampton Last, which if we come up come up on it closely, also has an almond shape, but you can see that this, this shoe comes more to a point. If I grab this Park Avenue, the Park Avenue is right here. You can see that the Alden actually comes to a bit more of a point at the toe of their shoe. And then you can see that this shoe only has one, two, three, four, five eyelets instead of the six that are seen on the two Allen Edmonds shoes. This is more of a traditional English or European aesthetic. Now, is there anything wrong with the English or European aesthetic compared to the American aesthetic? Absolutely none. It is merely an aesthetic thing. Though if there's one thing this shoe provides, it is definitely the most last shape. So if I were to grab this Park Avenue, you can automatically see that the Alden in this hand compared to the Allen Edmonds in this one, already has a lot of built-in shape on the shoe. Now for shoe aficionados, that is a definite plus for people who want the best looking shoe. Now say you're not a shoe aficionado and you don't want everything that the Alden offers, and particularly if you get turned off by the price tag, then an Allen Edmonds is not a bad thing either. Also on this Alden is a 270 degree welt. So the welt on the on the Alden goes from heel point to heel point. So the heel is actually held together by nails that go that go through the heel in here. Now if I show you this this is the this is the heel bed, but underneath the heel bed are nails that are actually going through that are actually going through the shoe and holding on to the heel block. Is a 270 degree welted shoe much more durably made than 360 degree welted shoe? It's definitely a debatable answer. The 270 degree welt has a bit more aesthetic things and it does have a bit more construction things. But as far as I know, a lot of cobblers agree a 360 degree welt is more easily recraftable than a 270 degree. And that is because of all the nails that go into making a 270 degree welted shoe. Though, of course, there is one more piece of trivia that I would like to share with you. I'll link to this video up over here. Here's some information from Steve at Beto's Leatherworks regarding Alden shoes constructing in general. Most manufacturers will, will, you know, will have the, the gimming like this, right? Just glue the gimming on. The gimming is this piece right here. Have it glued on the footbed. Now, what Alden does, there's another layer of canvas, there you go, there's another layer of canvas on top of this piece, okay, the idea behind this is that when over time of, of you know, the customer wearing the shoe, Sometimes the footbed will come loose from the gimming here, okay? So what happens is when that when that gimming comes loose here, it starts widening the shoe. The size changes. The size changes and it doesn't doesn't fit as quite comfortably as it as it did before. And then when somebody's re resoling it and they don't notice that they'll they'll make the shoe wider as they as they resole the shoe. Now this piece here, basically this canvas, okay, was stitched to the welt, just like that. So what happens is that even if this footbed comes loose from this gemming, this canvas is keeping that shape together. Okay. So now that we have the Alden's construction out of the way, let's discuss this shoe a little more. So the upper is also made of a high quality imported calfskin leather. This shoe also has a much cleaner look. So if we look 
right here at the cap, it is more closely made to the shoe. Same here at the vamp. It is more closely made, or as they would call it, it is scythed down so that, so that way these can more smoothly attach to one another. If I compare that to the Allen Edmonds, I'm gonna pick up the Park Avenue, the Hopkinson looks exactly the same. The, the Allen Edmonds has actually a hump, so, it, so you can actually see my finger, you can actually see my finger almost drop down. Of course, that is another aesthetic detail that some people care about, and you may not necessarily care about that. Now, the heel cushion here in the Alden is definitely comparable to the Hopkinson. It's very, very nice and soft, though I would not consider it as soft as the Poron, which is in the Hopkinson. As far as I know, Poron is almost memory foam-like, and it actually makes for a nice, soft, comfortable feel. Does that mean the leather insoles are any worse? No. And of course, the lining here in the shoe, though calfskin, it also feels nice and soft. Not quite as soft as the lambskin in the Hopkinson, though very much soft. And of course, a couple more details regarding this shoe. You can see that the bottom on the shoe here is dyed black. But that's, but that's, of course, another aesthetic thing. The big thing about this Alden is if I knock on this outsole, and then I go and knock on the Allen Edmonds here, Park Avenue, you can hear that the Allen Edmonds is a little more hollow. One more time. It's the Allen Edmonds. You can, knock, you can hear a difference in pitch between the two outsoles. So the Alden actually has a more compressed outsole, which means that this outsole may wind up lasting longer than the Allen Edmonds outsoles. Now, of course, here are some more aesthetic tells. You can see that the outsoles here have some wheeling to them. Cobblers call that fudging. And then of course you see the combination rubber and leather heel stacks with the tacking here in the heel stack. So now that we've gone over the details for these shoes, let's go over some comparisons for these shoes. The first thing I wanna go over is toe cap length. Again, this is another aesthetic thing that some people care about. So if I put these shoes flat, the Park Avenue on the left and the Hopkinson on the right. You can see that the Hopkinson has a longer toe cap than the Park Avenue does. Of course, again, another aesthetic thing. Now with the Aldens in, in hand, you can see that the Hopkinson and the Aldens have a similar toe cap length to one another. The Alden is ever so slightly longer than the Hopkinson. And I know some people do care about the toe cap length because they do care about toe cap creasing. Now toe cap creasing is a legitimate concern. The reason why toe cap creasing rarely happens is because of the toe puffs which all stiffen the caps. Now some people who experience toe cap creasing may have gotten a shoe size that may not work for them. That or they've had their shoes for so long that the stiffeners in the toe caps have worn out. Those are some things I can just think of off the top of my head. I can't say legitimately the reason why toe cap creasing might happen, though that's what I believe happens. And speaking of the stiffeners that go into the shoe, hard countering, the Aldens win, and I can show you why. So, if I show you here on the Allen Edmonds, there is some slight squish to the toe cap. Not, there's, minimal to no squishing in the heel and then the heel is the arch excuse me is properly supported like I can barely push that arch in I go over to the Hopkinson Hopkinson already I'm I, I'm compressing the toe cap really easily the heel same thing as the Park Avenue if I go to the arch that is even stiffer than the Park Avenue but for a much more defined arch, that is no surprise. If I go to the Alden down here at the end, if I go to this toe cap, I'm, I can't compress it. Heel, can't compress it. Arch, super stiff. So this shoe, by default, already wins that category, meaning on its own, the shoe can support itself. 
There are no shoe trees in these shoes, so you can automatically see what has the most last definition of the three pairs of shoes that I have here. And last but not least, let's talk about quality control. Now, there are some egregious mistakes that slip through the cracks of both of these Heritage American dress shoe companies. Though, people also like to look at these shoes as if they are well over a thousand dollars or even a bespoke shoe, which is a 100% handmade shoe and starts around 3,000 pounds sterling. Are some criticisms warranted and some not? Yes. Though, are some of the unwarranted criticisms warranted? Absolutely. Because when you're dropping as much as $600 for a dress shoe, you should go for a dress shoe that is well made, even if it is not necessarily 100% perfectly made, though you do want to hold a good dress shoe company to a high aesthetic quality as much of a high build quality. And I have no qualms with that. For more in-depth information on Allen Edmonds and their declining quality, I will link the Elgin Oxford's video up here in the corner. I'll give a quick little overview of one of the points, and that is that Allen Edmonds makes over 5,000 pairs of shoes in one day from their Port Washington factory. At a 4% bad quality threshold, that is 200 pairs of shoes a day that do not make the mark. Now some, now some people who wind up getting the bad quality shoes have a lot of warrants in getting mad at Allen Edmonds for sending them bad quality. For some of the smaller details that people get mad about, again, these are only, especially these Park Avenues, they are only $400. And I understand that's a lot of money. Yet, at the same time, you're not spending $1,000 or more on a dress shoe. If you were spending that kind of money on a dress shoe, I could expect why you would be mad about, about even the aesthetic things not being 100%. Now as for these Aldens, they do tend to have a higher standard of quality control and that's probably reflected in their price. However, this pair of Aldens that I got is not perfect either. Now if I come up and show you closely, right here you can see that this welt and the heel portion right here is not 100% lined, whereas here on the other side, you can see it is more properly lined up. Then to top it off, right here on the vamp, you can see right where my finger's pointing, that little crack in the, in the calf skin. Some people would be mad about those quality, thi quality things. Now I am gonna send all of these dress shoes back and I will get a proper sized shoe so that way I can try them on my feet. But who would I give the higher quality control standard to? I would probably give it to Alden. They've been making shoes since 1884, have never put out a sale, so it is probably much more understandable that their quality control is much tighter than Allen Edmonds. How much tighter is the unanswerable question. So what is the conclusion? What is my decision? What is my decision? That is not for you guys to know. Not yet. What I do want to say though is that both of these shoe companies put out great shoes at the price that they do. For me, having a narrow foot, a US 13B size foot, means that my options are already limited. And as far as I know, these two shoe companies, Allen Edmonds and Alden, only provide dress shoes, high quality dress shoes, in the sizes that I need. Now for someone who has a more average fitting foot, a defitting foot, you would be able to look at other shoe companies other than these two companies. That The intent for this video was to focus more on the American Heritage dress shoe companies and give them a little bit of love. Secondly, I haven't seen many videos on Alden details and I did want to share a little more of what I personally noticed about Alden's versus Allen Edmonds. Like I said, as someone looking into quality menswear and wanting to have a pair of dress shoes last me the rest of my life and not have to spend a lot of money more, these shoes are the first step to get there. I need a good new pair of black shoes and this is my starting point because the next level for me is going all the way to England and dropping well over a thousand dollars for shoes that will properly fit my foot. So keeping a budget of $600 for these American dress shoes is actually a really good thing. There are a lot of other companies where their shoes aren't necessarily made in the United States, but the companies are based in the United States 
and you can get dress shoes that are that can fit you well for under six hundred dollars i will name some of those shoe companies down in the description below so i want to thank everyone for watching this video if you liked it please like this video and if you'd like to check out the fitting video that i plan on doing in the in the future like i said how long in the future i have no idea but if you do want to see that please subscribe i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next one